And now to an old favorite with a new name, but that's not all. We have Azure Synapse Analytics, previously known as Azure SQL Data Warehouse, and it's evolved in Microsoft's quest for limitless analytics service. And here to tell you about the latest and greatest from Azure Synapse Analytics, please welcome Savine Reddy, Principal Group Program Manager, and also has like the best camera set up in the world. Welcome, Savine. Oh, good morning, good morning. It's uh, I know it is so early where you are, so I just want to say super thanks for jumping on the stream with us. I know uh, lots of people from around the world at Microsoft have been getting up at very strange times, including our very own Christina, um, and and helping us out here. So just huge thank you for for speaking to us in the European and Africa time zone. Oh, it's my privilege. Um, oh, great stuff, great stuff. Um, so let's. Dive in. Savine, talk to me more about what you do at Microsoft. I love this question because honestly, I love what I do. Uh, <laughs> and uh, there are three things I'll focus on. Number one, uh, you know, with Synapse especially, uh, one of the things we, we, we wear many hats as we build Synapse, and I was there from the inception. Number one is working on platform components. This is a complex product, lots of integration, many moving parts. And my team helped build some of the core platform components that really even invisibly makes user interactions seamless. Super proud of that. Number two, you know, just like many other product managers at Microsoft, I'm really driven by numbers and feedback. So I love looking at the numbers, seeing the signal as we call it, uh, from, from customers, from community, what the product telemetry tells us. We take that, we analyze it, you know, we formulate hypotheses, we test that by running experiments, look at those results and then action that. So I love operating that way. And that's all product managers should be doing that. And then finally, the thing that I'm most proud of, honestly, um, very deeply proud of, and it isn't just me, this is truly a case of it takes a village. We built a world-class user experience team. And here I am talking about the engineers, the UX researchers, the UX designers, and of course the product managers. You know, we have a great set of people uh, they're super passionate, very dedicated. We learn from each other. Most importantly, we build a great culture. That's what I'm most proud of building, that great culture. And I truly believe from the great culture, you get the great outcomes for, you know, for our customers and for our business. Totally agree, totally agree. And um, so it sounds like a very exciting team to be on, which is amazing. Good shout out for your team there. Um, and I guess first things first, we might have lots of experts watching the stream, but we might also have some beginners. So can you um, kind of break down what is Azure Synapse Analytics? Absolutely, absolutely. So you mentioned before, you know, it used to exist as something called Azure SQL Data Warehouse, right? Uh, and we've evolved that into this next phase of Azure Synapse Analytics. In one sentence, Azure Synapse Analytics is a limitless service that brings together enterprise data warehousing, that's SQL, and big data analytics, that's Spark. And why is this important? Think about the challenge customers are having today when they're trying to build an analytic system to drive actions and insight to drive their business. They're struggling, multiple technologies, services, formats, uh, type systems, security models. The expertise and the time to build and wire these up is, is really daunting. So Azure Synapse Analytics is trying to answer this one question. How do I do analytics in Azure? And the answer is Synapse. That is how you do analytics in Azure. And I'm a big believer in that power of, of one. It's one service, one user experience, one metadata model, one security model that works with any data, anywhere, any scale. Now, one of my colleagues loves to use the phrase, it's not one to many, it's one to any. I love that. It shows you a unified product that works with any data you have. And there are four key capabilities in Synapse. SQL Analytics, which is of course doing analytics with SQL technologies everyone's familiar with. Apache Spark for Synapse. Doing analytics with, with Spark, pipeline, it's all about pipelines, which is all about data integration and orchestration. Right? And finally, Studio, our unified web native user experience. Those four pieces make up Azure Synapse Analytics. Uh, syn the SQL Analytics part was just in the realm of data warehouse before. What we're going forward is merging all four of those together 
into a, a new unified product. I love that. Love that. And um, great level set. So it's a really good way to explain it. Actually, sometimes it's um, it's like, oh, it does so much. I don't even know where to start. Um, so we first saw Azure Synapse Analytics released at Ignite 2019, and my co-host Dean said. Um, Rohan did such an exciting presentation that he was like in the middle of the expo and was just like, what is what is going on? Like, what is this all about? Um, so tell us what's happened since Ignite 2019. Well, um, you know, like we did two things at Ignite 2019. You know, we revealed the new branding, which is, of course, SQL DW. It's just the name became Synapse and Links. That's part one. And that's an existing G8 service. What we revealed was the preview of the future, and that takes the form of something called Synapse Workspaces. That's the thing I mentioned earlier that brings together SQL Analytics, Spark Analytics, Pipelines, and Studio. Now, the reveal was amazing. We got tremendous amounts of excitement, and the great thing is the feedback universally. Customers love the concept. They love the vision. They felt like it could solve their, their problems. And their question, when can I get it? <laughs> okay, so, you know, they want it immediately. What we did at Ignite was launch a private preview. We've had over 100 customers heavily using Synapse for the last six months. And so what we've been doing in that time, honestly, is learning and listening and responding. So feedback has been around security, CICD, platform, monitoring, metadata model, and of course, seamlessness. How do we refine the user experience? That's what we've been doing for the last six months leading up to build 2020. Very, very nice. And I guess um, working with customers allows you to learn about um, operations at scale and how it works and, and what, what people want from it, I guess, as well, is, is one of those amazing pieces of feedback. And so now we are in May 2020. Um, what's new at Build? I think I saw a mention in the keynote, but I'll let you uh, you reiterate for us. Well, the first, the first and most important thing, honestly, is that we were in private preview. Now we are in we are in just preview. The call to action: go to portal.azure.com, type in Synapse. You'll see the following entry: Azure Synapse Analytics Workspace Preview. Click on it. You'll answer just a few questions. To pick a storage account, and in about five minutes, you can begin using SQL Analytics, Spark Analytics, Studio, and Pipelines to, to really start doing your insights. Right? Now, that's the major announcement. Now, there's a, I saw the list of all the things that have been added or improved, and the, the list would take me days to go through, honestly. But I'll focus on some key ones that I want to I land with you. Number one, uh, we've really made it easy to share data between the SQL world and the Spark world through our unified metadata system. We've made massive strides in monitoring, bringing both SQL and Spark up to the same bar. We've uh, really strengthened our security. Now we have a role-based security model. We have improved our Power BI integration so you can edit reports directly in Synapse Studio that are in your Power BI workspace. And one of the most major announcements yesterday you know, I talk about any data anywhere at any scale. We introduced something called Synapse Link, which broadens that. So now, in addition to, of course, uh, data that's in our tables and data that's in storage accounts and data lake store, we're talking about data that's in Cosmos DB. So that's huge. That again, we want to be the analytics answer for any data you have in Azure. And of course, a continued, continued uh, refinement about every part of the experience that makes it seamless. Fantastic. I was going to say, when I saw that in the keynote about Azure Synapse Link, I was like aggressively writing down in my notebook that I had to ask you about it. So thank you for, for bringing that one up. And it's exciting to see, like you said, it just it, improvements in every area of that pipeline, whether it's the Power BI, so the, the end almost, uh, or the, the feedback mechanism for understanding your data better, the collaboration between SQL and Spark. No longer is it a choice, it's a thing of bringing these all together. Um, and I guess one of the things I would love to do, if you don't mind, is do you have a few demos for us? Can you show us a bit of Synapse Analytics? I absolutely do. And in the few minutes we have, I'll show you. Just, I have to tell you, it's just a taste of what oh, we really have. That's cool. 
All right, the tip of the iceberg. There's so much there. So uh, let's start with what I'm looking at. You're seeing at you're seeing Synapse Studio, our our web native experience that brings it all together. Now Synapse Studio uh, has six what we call activity hubs, right? And this is just where you're going to center your activity on certain kinds of topics. We're in the home hub, and the purpose of the home hub is to lead a user through the process of building an analytic solution. And you can see we've actually modeled some of that right up here in these cards. Ingest data into your storage accounts, your lake, explore the data where it is, analyze the data with SQL or Spark, and of course, visualize the data with Power BI. In the demo, I'm gonna focus heavily on the explore and analyze, because that's where you're gonna see, again, the worlds of SQL and Spark coming together in this unified vision in one experience. And you're gonna see where we've made things seamless and easy in these two cases. So let's start by looking at our first hub, which is called data. You know, the first thing we do is bring in data and we have like 90 connectors that'll bring in data from on-premise sources as well as cloud sources. And we land them in the data lake. Now what I've already done is I've landed them into my storage account. And it's the famous New York City taxi cab data. And I've exported the data in two formats, two very common formats. One is, of course, a COB, sorry, comma separated value file, CSV. And the other, very popular in the Spark world, Parquet. So I'm going to just right click on the Parquet and just show you something, which is that we have these really nice gestures on any data, Parquet or CSV, which is new SQL script and new notebook. Now, let's start with new notebook because that's going to be where Spark is. Now, instead of clicking on this and building it up, I'm just going to show you a notebook I pre-built. It's not complex. You'll get the point very quickly. So this is, uh, sorry, this is not the notebook. This is the notebook. And this notebook has two cells in it. The first cell is just a traditional, and let me create some extra space here so that we can see it, is essentially a single line that says, Did create a data frame by reading with Spark a Parquet file. The second one says a very similar thing, except, except it reads from, the, from a CSV file. Now, what to notice about this? Essentially, these are one-liners. What you should notice is there's no code I had to write about security. I didn't have to put secrets in the code. Authentication automatically worked because of our tight integration with Azure Active Directory, right? We plumbed the user's identity all the way down to storage. That makes life simpler. Number two, in both these cases, I didn't have to specify a schema. In the Parquet case, it's inferred from the metadata in the Parquet file. In the CSV case, it's inferred by looking at the data. That ability to infer meta uh, schema from the file simplifies the exploration phase of using data. Now, what I've shown you is standard Spark. There's nothing surprising here, except we've made it much more seamless in Synapse. Let's take it into the SQL world, because in the SQL world, looking at Parquet files and CSV files can feel very different. And I'm going to open up just a SQL script with the two equivalent queries. Now, what you might have done in the old world, pre-Synapse, is essentially use Polybase, created an external table and a data source and a file format. So we created all these metadata objects just to read a file. That's no longer the case. Look at the first line. Select top 100 from open row set, and here's the file name, a Parquet file. The bottom one, select top 100 from open row set, a CSV file. And it has the same benefits we saw in the Spark world. It's one liner, authentication is handled automatically. And uh, of course, uh, this is just makes it super, super simple because you don't have to do any schema in, uh, inference. Oh, sorry. It does schema inference for you. You don't have to type in the columns. You certainly can create external tables and specify the columns. But imagine how much simpler this makes just seeing the data you have, understanding what's there. So that's exploration. Now, let's take a look at data that isn't just in files somewhere in the lake. Let's take a look at tables, SQL tables, Spark tables. Now, I'm going to just expand this out in the data hub. And you're gonna notice, uh, I can see under workspace, several databases. Now there's several types of databases. We have a SQL on-demand database, 
you have a SQL pool database, you can see right here, SQL DB1, and I have another database, a Spark database, which is called NYC Taxi. And so I'm gonna focus on what it takes to get data between these two systems. And traditionally, this would be very challenging. Let's take a look at what it looks like in Synapse. And it's right here in this notebook. There's only four lines really in this notebook. And I just wanna talk about what those lines are. And it uses a technology we call the SQL Spark Connector. First line, create a data frame from the SQL table. What could be simpler? Next line, write that data frame to a C uh, Spark table. Pretty obvious. Next line, take the data in that table and compute some aggregates. Let's save that in a new data frame. And then finally, write that prepared aggregated data right back into SQL. That was four lines that did something that would take you a lot of pain and time in, traditionally. Again, it's seamless. And again, the theme of any data anywhere, we had that full is, support in um, SQL and Spark. Amazing. Thank you so much, Savine. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but it is amazing to have seen the studio, um, hear about those hints and tips, and hopefully set everyone up in the audience to go and learn more themselves. So if you want to learn more about what Savine talked about, check out aka.ms slash synapse. Thank you so much for joining us, Savine, and, um, and waking up so early. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No problem. Now, let's hear more about masterful technology. Spoiler, I've got a black belt in code, so check this out. Hi, my name is Ryan.